The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends. Up 13 points on the S&P cash at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And, of course, in the belly of the beast of fun buying, the last two or three days of the month, first two days of the month, depending on the charter for that particular ETF or fund or manager. But 85% uh, of funds have to be 100% invested by the second or third trading day of the month. So there's always about a 1% bias uh, into the last couple of days. We're up half a percent today on the S&P cash. Uh, volume, 1.9 billion shares as we start the show, which is only, yeah, it's about 100, 100 million more than yesterday. So volume still sucketh, the big one. Uh, but uh, it is summertime out here. Uh, we'll talk about some other things, but to me, um, we are at levels that, uh, at least for uh, bearish sentiment, that uh, are in line with QE 1, 2, and 3, um, the weeks and days following that announcement and the, the continuation of, of those back to uh, uh, 2011 and 2012 and 2013 all the major QE and QE versions. Um, anyway, we're down to uh, incredibly light levels. Uh, we had one of the lightest levels in, in uh, six, was it six years? I went through them this morning. I think it was six years uh, yesterday. So there was literally nobody willing to pull the trigger, uh, at least percentage-wise. Uh, most days... Uh, with a variety of things. We've got market makers who short the market to make a market, keep things running, kind of uh, grease the skids, as it were. Uh, there's a lot of other reasons to short inner day and then not go home. But uh, generally, you get kind of a little run level. And you know, for the most part, that even in a, a trending market that trends up, uh, you're going to have you know, a certain percentage of shorts just from the market makers. Um, normally in the S&P 500, uh, when you look at those, uh, 12 to 14 percent in one day is pretty t uh, typical. Uh, I would say that's in the uh, in the better part of the bell curve. Uh, on the far extremes, or 20, and some days as much as 25 percent of the shares uh, were initiated with a short sell. But uh, on the downside, 10% is fairly low. Well, we were in the eights yesterday. And that kind of tells you everything you need to know. There is absolutely nobody shorting this market uh, as a whole. It, some very tiny individual stocks, but that's about it. Um, and we've gotten to the point now where there's a lot of diminishing returns. There just isn't anybody left to really squeeze out of the market, maybe a handful of stocks. But for the most part, we've seen Tesla run. We've seen most of the other stocks that are ludicrously priced run. And what do we got? We got uh, 14 points in the S&P cash. Not a bad day if you're long, up six tenths of a percent. Uh, if you're short, wasn't the end of the world. Uh, but um, we're gonna talk about it in history today. Uh, to, to, oh, I have to thank somebody in the den for bringing that up. I have to uh, go fix something here. I think it's because of these den things. We will figure it out. Okay. Let's go back here. Time to application. 
Okay. Is it there? It's there. Okay. We'll get back to my screen. And it should be moving now. Uh, all, all our den problems. Hopefully this is the last day of them. Um, anyway, um, oh, we didn't even, oh, can't show that. We haven't gone to our history yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just do that right now. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating on this day in 1720, believe it or not. The biggest speculative bubble in history nears its peak as the South Sea Company stock shoots up from 610 to 870 on June 1st and June 2nd. Oh, that's today. Among the people who think they're getting rich quick are Sir uh, Godfrey Neller, the greatest portrait painter in England, Jonathan Swift, the author, uh, author of Gulliver's Travel, and probably King George himself. Uh, within weeks, their hot returns will turn cold as ice as the South Seas shares drop all the way back down to 150 uh, in two weeks, and of course, worthless within, I think, two years. Uh, this had gone to and was up at about a thousand uh, just a month or two earlier. Uh, the guy that was running this giant scam, uh, his last name was Law. Can't remember his first name right now. I'll think about it. Uh, but uh, anyway, it was a giant land scam. It's kind of things going down through history that everybody believes is, uh, you know, great. I'm always thinking that, yeah, it's a scam. Um, and what can you see in this? Well, from the tulip mania of uh, the early 1600s uh, to this, uh, we continue to go from bubble to bubble to bubble. And I think any trader that wants to do this for a living should sit down and read a few books about history and what's happened in the past, because as many people want us to think that we're somehow different than the people of 300 years ago or 200 years ago, we're really not that much different. Human nature has not really changed in those 300 years. Uh, we've gained a lot of knowledge. Unfortunately, a lot of people uh, still think that knowledge is absolute. While we don't believe a lot of silly things that they did then, we've made up all kinds of new silly things to believe in now, but uh, it never changes. So uh, just keep an eye on it. Um, I'm often, uh, people ask me about what I love uh, for history books in the market. One of the best books of all time is only about 120 pages long, and it's a very fast read. It's called A Short History of Financial Euphoria by John Kenneth Galbraith. He was a uh, Kennedy uh, economist, and why I didn't buy a lot of his economist talk, uh, he was a very good historian. Uh, and went through most of the bubbles. Uh, this book came out in 1993. I read it the first time, probably around 1999, because I could sense something was going wrong into the dot-com thing. But uh, we'll, we'll read his quote, we'll talk a little bit more about this, and we'll get into start, uh, stock charts. Because I think, yes, the market is getting bubble issues. Back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey! Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And John Kenneth Galbraith, this is from his book, A Short uh, History of Financial Euphoria. Uh, I read it in 1999 as uh, many people were starting to warn about uh, a overheated market. Uh, I don't know many people caught it last week, but uh, the Fed was out there saying basically the same thing from, uh, uh, from what was it? Uh, I'm going to say 1996, maybe. I'm going to see if I can't find it here right now because I just thought of it. Uh, 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 yeah, here it is. 1996, there was a speech by Mr. Greenspan. I'm going to go ahead and play it. How do we know when irrational exuberance has unduly escalated asset values, which then become subject to unexpected and prolonged contractions as they have in Japan over the past decade? Well, it took uh, almost four years, yeah, about four years, for that warning to uh, come on. One of the dinners said that markets can remain overvalued for a long time, and that's fairly true. What they can't do is exist without more suckers uh, fanning the flames of those, and that's why I watch volume a great deal, and the market breadth, uh, both of those are saying wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. And of course, I don't know what else you can say about that. <laughs> That's what volume is today. Uh, did we, yeah, we just turned 2 billion shares today on 14 points higher in the S&P cash. Um, we've been looking, or at least I've been looking for something like 5 billion shares on the NYSE consolidated tape to really have some kind of sign of strength at the high. We did not have have not as we've broken through this 2400 level so yeah, can we go higher you could always go a little higher uh but one of the things i did want to and was thinking about today was the history 
And in fact, some people ask me why I short uh, markets. And I said, well, because the money you make in them is monstrous um, many times. And if you go through a list of the biggest uh, single trades of all time by stock traders, you won't find uh, the stock that someone held for five years. You will find leveraged positions that actually went against uh, the people that uh, provided that leverage. Uh, and, of course, until, I want to say, 2006 or seven, I want to say 2006, um, there was a trader who was short natural gas. And I can remember it because I was short natural gas at the same time and didn't hold it quite as long as this guy did. Uh, he made $1.8 billion as a single trade. And I think he had like a million and a half to start with in natural gas. Uh, but that is the recorded biggest downside in the market. But again, natural gas, a giant balloon back then. Uh, before that, uh, it was the short uh, by Jesse Livermore of some REITs, uh, a basket of REITs that they had in 1929. Uh, all that property became basically worthless. And very interesting part in his book, and I think there's another book that actually talks about it. Uh, he had been short going in to the beginning of, or the very end of the summer of 1929 and got uh, basically got stopped out a couple of times lost uh, three or four million dollars the first time four or five million the second time and the third time was uh, the charm he made about three hundred million dollars and that's in 1929 dollars and till that uh, that was the biggest single trade of all time uh, far beyond people just holding individual stocks. Of course, these are much rarer, rarer as hinties, than people holding stocks that go to the moon and those people still having the ability to actually sell them while they're up there. Most people just take them to the moon. If they've held them that long, they hold them again, and eventually they come back down, and of course the people have never sold them either. So uh, the, the question isn't whether you can hold a stock, it's whether you can sell it after you've held it for a long time. And that's rare in most markets. But uh, well, a lot of people say, well, I don't understand the whole short side of the market. And the answer is you will eventually get a taste for it if you hang around long enough, uh, just because the uh, massive amounts of money you can make uh, when you are right and when you have a leveraged product like a put against it. Uh, you can afford to be wrong a few times and then make 20, 30, or 40 times your money. Uh, changes things in a, a big way, especially in choppy markets where you can be, you know, up and down one day uh, and, uh, you know, down the next. It becomes a little issue out here. But um, a lot of people saying, well, you know, how can you short this? Well, because I know almost always there's a giant pot of gold, much more than I would have ever made charge, uh, chasing a market higher out there. And uh, I'm rather bearish uh, and have been for a little while. I've got a couple of positions. They're all fine. I'm not stopping out anything today. Um, but uh, you know what? Volume and the lack of it at highs is always something to fear. The lack of anybody else willing to short historically has been one of the biggest tells in the market, i.e. everybody on one side of the market. I'm trying to remember a market uh, that was more like this other than uh, the dot-com. But even the dot-com, people were shorting the daylights out of those things. They'd go up 200 points one day on some nothing stock that literally didn't even have a dime coming in and probably the prospects of a dime ever coming in were almost zero sock puppet days. People were shorting those and getting squeezed out uh, repeatedly. And then, of course, uh, eventually uh, there weren't uh, everybody who kind of figured the jig was up, the music stopped and the uh, pets.com went to zero rather quickly. 
And the people that were kind of on the tail end of that train uh, made a fortune compared to those people that ended up uh, buying it on the way up. Almost all of them got burned. I saw trading rooms demolished going in uh, and coming out of uh, the dot-com uh, bubble in 2000. I also saw that happen again in 2007, 8, and 9. Uh, there were very few people that made it back out the other side that were still standing uh, on the 2009 side. Um, and uh, I was still there. Uh, you try to be greedy when everybody's afraid and you try to be afraid when everybody's greedy. Well, I'm thinking everybody's kind of greedy and a little piggish up here. Uh, I don't think that anything's changed that much fundamentally. And uh, at a 26 PE, no shorts in the market and light volume. I'm not willing to uh, go out there and play games from the deer hunter and blow my head off. I will be back in a The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're watching what's going on up here. Uh, crude oil's up uh, 30 cents. Uh, gold off six and a half. Eh, not much else to scream about out here. After the bell tonight, we've got Lulu Mon, Broadcom, Workday, 
Five Below and Restoration Hardware in the morning. We go to Hovanian, which gives us a read on housing. And again, kind of in the light part of earnings, I don't see anything that would actually change the market that much. Uh, the biggest thing we have right now, of course, is fund buying, and that goes on uh, through tomorrow, although I suspect that uh, almost all of that will be done by today or by 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, it's been a short week, and my guess is that many people are headed right back to the Hamptons uh, after the bell opens tomorrow. The big men of the street will vacate the market. Uh, it's not uncommon to see extremely light. Uh, Fridays and Mondays now, of course, going through the rest of the summer trading season. Had a couple of uh, calls on Alaska Airline, I think this is, ALK. You can, of course, uh, email me at path at tfnn.com and uh, call me at 877-927-6648. Okay. So you gap down with a lot of juice back uh, with uh, almost 3.2 million shares on the 27th of April. You are back into it today with one, what, uh, with 744,000 shares. Okay, down with 3.2 million, up with 750,000 so far today. Uh, this candle down on the 26th is... 2.4 million shares, and you're just hitting that now. Um, yeah, 89 bucks is probably your target um, off that low, but you've had no retest of the previous low. So I don't know what to say out here. This looks to me like just about everything you should expect if you wanted to pull the trigger short on these. Uh, let's see what the retracement is. Um, you've got confluence right here between 78.47 and 78.86. Um, and you don't have much juice. Uh, you have more congestion between 89 and 91. So could you go back up a little bit more tomorrow on light volume? You could, but uh, a dangerous stock if you go back and look at the 26th of April's candle where you started to see this volume back down. You're now coming into that uh, supply line, and at least today without the kind of volume, uh, you're also, if I was buying this at 81.73, I would have said I got everything I could have gotten by getting that confluence level at 78, uh, yeah, $87, he said. I'll oh, take a look at H A. See if there's any different story in that one. Uh, t -t -t not a lot. This one's a little tougher to figure out. Uh, this one's just in a triangle. I don't, couldn't give you a call either way. It's probably going to break very hard one way or the other. Uh, just a very tough to give you a read on that. Uh, support is at fifty dollars and eighty nine cents. So you're over that, again, half the volume today. It's going to be, you know, if you don't have a lot of volume come in the last five minutes of the day, I don't see the risk reward in these. Maybe there's something different. I saw a lot of people wanting to fly this summer. I just, very tough for me to see uh, how that doesn't move around. So I'm not a big fan of either, but uh, we can take a look at that another day. Uh, I'd I don't know what you're looking at in these, but neither one of them look that appetizing to me. One looks like it's almost done bouncing, and the other one, uh, not a clue out here other than you're back above the confluence level. So, and this 50, and just under $51 level should look like uh, some level of support in the stock. So, hopefully, that helps you out. I, eh. That would be it. Uh, Vago. Um, we were talking about some of these stocks uh, with earnings coming in uh, and finally giving us some decent signals. Probably one of the reasons why the SMH isn't really uh, doing that much today uh, is that we do have volume and volume on the way down. 
and a solid break of the trend higher. Let's go back and look at this as just a standard uh, traditional nine-day moving average. Um, we we're solidly breaking even the nine-day out here. Um, again, you're probably going to, we're probably uh, kind of a week away from this thing, pulling back, trying to push higher and failing and coming back. Uh, the Vago looks like 208.44 is the next low out here to test. CNA had a good uh, earnings call. Why is that uh, not coming up? We'll find out why. Uh, CNA had a good earnings call last night. It was up about 10% after the bell. Uh, again, uh, breaking through previous highs, but not holding those previous highs and coming back into the trading range. Watch the close on this one. March 1st, this saw $26.84 with 3 million shares. Through it was 17.7 .7 million shares, but not holding that previous high uh, and the spike today, giving about, uh, eh, I'm not going to say half, maybe a fourth of it back. A nice move, good sign of strength, but unable to hold those March 1st highs. If we go back and look at this one a little bit longer, um, maybe just a little bit too much too soon. Good earnings, though. Uh, recent IPO goose, little spike in this guy today. Uh, but again, uh, not holding those highs. Did go above this $18 level. Uh, to me, this is a seasonal story. Of course, they make uh, down goose jackets. Uh, and there was a lot of uh, fanfare when this thing IPO'd. Uh, but uh, interesting action on that. Uh, let's go back and look at some of these. Hymix, uh, the maker of memory chips. Not much out here. Nice little pop today, but still in this trading range. Don't make much of that. HP Enterprise, um, nobody happy with this one today. Um, the second gap down, not as bad as this first one, came on some decent energy. Uh, you're back down to a low of 1731 from April 3rd that had 32 million shares, and you've got 31 million shares already. So, again, HP separated the good from the bad, and uh, all this HPE stuff, I think, is the bad. Always hard to keep these two apart. Uh, uh, Part, but that's it. Uh, Lulu Mon again after the bell of the night, but getting uh, some movement out here. This thing's already at the low. We've seen these things either go to heaven or hell on earnings. I don't think anything's dramatically changed in Lulu Mon since its last earnings call and it blew up uh, back on what is that, uh, the 31st of March? I think they pre announced back then. Nothing much change in this one but after the bell tonight it's a little a little higher uh, of course the big one we're going to be talking about tomorrow the or the, uh, after the bell not after, but after the commercial is the pan w a n w we'll be back if you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And as we uh, look at earnings, uh, a lot of people were short Palo Alto going into its earnings. Uh, pretty much the wrong side of this. It, you know, this one was kind of a coin flip. But you have to think with all the hacking news, one day these things would get a little sign. Uh, this is coming back and giving about half this gap down uh, on uh, 22 million shares back from March 1st. Uh, about uh, 13 million shares. So you're only going to get half that volume. Again, not that heavily short, but short. And just a lot of people out of position in these. Um, don't think you can say anything more than this. Um, 145, this thing's going to have massive resistance levels, uh, people that just rode this one down too long. Uh, Skyworks Solutions. Uh, now, this one is one that didn't really give uh, any signals and up a little bit on light volume. But the volume, uh, the last time this thing really had any kind of big juice, you could probably say was the 17th of February when this thing did kind of move higher and then consolidate out. But that was on almost, eh, let's call it five and a half million shares. Um, we're pretty much average uh, a million or a little less than a million shares a day for the last seven or 10 days. Just take a quick look at the SMHs. Well, same thing, semiconductors. Trust other than this is not higher today. Um, you got a, a chance of a signal in this thing that, went the other way, uh, getting kind of close again to a potential point of failure. Um, question is whether or not you get one more gap higher in this. You've got kind of two gaps here uh, at one at 78 and one at 83. Question is, do you get one more out there? Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Let's take a quick look at Apple. I don't think we've talked about that one here in the last couple of days. Now, Apple... Of course, we've been waiting for this thing to close below the three by three. And you're going to get that, I think, today if nothing else happens. Um, that would suggest that the Apple is headed back down to 143, 142. And I think there's an excellent chance that you get that. Everybody and their dog has been in this thing. That's got a fairly decent chart pattern. Uh, let's go back here to the three by three out here. Um, and this one closed underneath it yesterday, coming into it today. But I would imagine that this is the kind of pattern you look for. Uh, 142, 143, uh, pretty high probability on that one. A little less, but still open is the 121 to 126 gap that goes back to uh, the 1st of February. 
Um, I'm going to say that the first gap, 80% chance you're going to see that those gaps around 143, 144 get covered. I'm going to say probably 50, 55% that you see these 125 to 120 gaps filled in Apple. And it seems kind of ludicrous going into this fall, but uh, this thing has been pushed incredibly hard uh, for a long time. And it may be one of these things where you sell the sizzle uh, and then wait for the steak and the steak just does not come up to it. And you got a couple old ladies out there saying, where's the beef? But uh, the, the pattern on this does not look good at all. It may be one of the weakest charts out here in all of the tech sector. Um, but anyway, you got a sell signal on that that is going to be about 80% of the time, at least back to this movement that started on the 20th of April. So keep an eye on all those semis out here. This one could have, uh, what is it? What are we going to talk about? 12 bucks down, 10 bucks down? Could have 10 bucks down fairly quickly in the coming week or so. Normally, these things, like tomorrow, uh, you get a little continuation in it, and then they really just kind of accelerate back down uh, to the last part of support. This really didn't have a sign of strength and okay volume uh, going up on the 8th, but uh, this thing really looks rather creaky to me here and probably one of the weaker stocks in the fangs if not the, the uh, weakest. Um, let's take a look at this. Again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. Okay, what do you got? Um, after the bell tonight, is this it now? I think so. After the bell tonight, it's not doing much. Uh, Teresa T-S-R-O. And, of course, we've talked about wind being the uh, proxy for China out here. We've got a nice gap up in this today and a little bit of volume, 3 million shares today in wind. Uh, you really didn't have much as you went against this yesterday. So no real good sign this thing was all ready to bust out 1.7 million shares yesterday. But uh, you got 3 million shares today. It did break above it. Um, you, all you want, don't want, of course, is a gap down tomorrow in win. So we'll look at that. I uh, want to quick, take a quick look at Microsoft. Microsoft launched the second version of their uh, machine learning package to go up against Google's package called TensorFlow. Uh, Microsoft's called CNTK. And no, nobody, collective yawn or even worse, out here on Microsoft, down not much volume today, 15 million shares, so not much happening in this one. I think this one is probably, a lot, along with uh, Apple, uh, fairly weak, down to about uh, $66.50. Um, this whole last run just seems very light uh, as we look at it out here. So not a fan of Apple or Microsoft when we start looking at those FANG stocks. Uh, let's take a quick look at Facebook. I had to laugh my rear end off last night watching the news because uh, there was somebody, a, uh, a political uh, type that ran for the election uh, that was whining about fake news uh, in a tech environment last night in Silicon Valley. And the first question I was going to ask when they started talking about fake news would be, why did you spend $700,000 to buy a lot of fake likes from uh, Facebook? Uh, were you not engaging in fake news by doing it and hiring these folks? Uh, but uh, interestingly enough, that one presidential candidate uh, had some 40% of the people that liked her living <laughs> in Iraq and one city in Iraq. So what does that tell you? Uh, there are still mills out here that can certainly give you all the likes you want if you want to astroturf what's happening and, and really push fake news uh, with fake book. But uh, I thought it was a little in, uh, ingenuous to uh, talk about uh, fake news 
and then not own up to the fact that you were uh, pumping it out yourself to the tune of almost $700,000 for fake likes during an election. Uh, anyway, fake book, as it's come to be, with its uh, rather dubiously uh, leaning uh, CEO. You had a test of the high. You did so on 5 million shares yesterday. It rolled right back into the, the uh, trading range. Uh, I think we've got a, a market that is set up for weaker prices in these banks. We'll be back in a minute. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And, um, oh, I'll look at a few more stocks out here. Look at Amazon real quick. I had a real question. Do I think that this climate change thing changes anything? I think this market is completely divorced from politics at this point. A-M-Z-N. Uh, and I don't think it matters that much. The market might be a little up on, on us getting out of that because basically it set up us as taking all the hits and China doing nothing. China would have been a continued to allow them to make and build two more coal fire plants a week. Um, pretty ridiculous agreement, whether you believe in all that stuff or not, that literally we have to do all the cutbacks uh, for climate change and the rest of the world does literally nothing. So I don't understand that, an agreement like that. One, it's 
it's not going to do anything if you have China building two new coal plants a day, if you believe in it. Why would you sign up for that if you do believe it? I don't know. This seemed very weird and strange and uh, incredibly twisted. Uh, Amazon up here for three days straight. Just kind of hanging out. When we look at this, it's getting kind of close. It's not like Apple. Apple's already given the signal that it can roll over at any time now. Uh, this is not closed below the three by three. So maybe if you're expecting Amazon to pull back at all, this thing would need to close again for my double repo pattern. Could it just pull back without any of this? I think it could, but it's still the strongest horse in the stable. For the market and i don't think much else is going to happen uh, with that uh, i wanted to see if some of these other stocks that had been doing rather weak how they were doing and you really just not getting much of a read like ibm's just going sideways out here uh this thing is not starting to get juice like even some of the fallen angels are out here being bought uh let's see what else uh nvda uh, just kind of hanging out here. These haven't given a signal either. And this is, of course, the strongest of the SMHs uh, out here. And But, you know, kind of light volume. These may be a week away. Uh, of course, you might get that accelerated if you see something like uh, Apple starting to pull back. Uh, again, that's the weakest one on my call. And if you had Apple pull back, if all these other ones were still up, the best you could probably hope for is a draw over the next few days. You got fun buying right now. That goes through tomorrow, and it's over. Uh, at best, when we look at these volumes at the end of the day, and, and I look at the actual dollar amounts coming into the market, they are not big enough to signal any kind of strength at these highs. That means that uh, you basically have a house with its foundation on sand. Does the storm come tomorrow? I can't promise you that. I can tell you that when a storm call uh, does come, that these stocks with no volume at the highs are the ones that are already headed down first will probably be the worst hit uh, in any kind of pullback in this market. But uh, I don't, uh, I'm not very fond of trying to buy highs, and especially when we see as thin as the uh, market is for breadth. Uh, we see that in the summation index, which is all 2,700 stocks, not just a handful of stocks in the S&P 500. But if you look at the NYSE or the uh, complete NASDAQ uh, summation index, uh, kind of telling a different story out there, which is very, very few people pulling the wagon. Most of the stocks in the wagon, and uh, along with light volume, always a dangerous combination. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to, and we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.